Hi. And so uh, we've in here we're looking at anti derivatives uh, because we've already looked at what derivative is, which is to differentiate a function. So we've been introduced or we've looked at how to perform um, or find the derivative of a function. And we also looked at the many useful applications of differentiation, which is derivatives. Now, given the velocity of a particle, um, a first thing may want to know the position at any given point, or given that if we, if we know the rate of growth of a culture, then a biologist may want to know the size of the population at any given time. Now, in each of these cases, the question we want to know is to how do we turn the process around? And that is to find a function, all right? So we want to find a function capital F whose derivative is given by F of X, all right? So given that if I find capital F, whose derivative is given by F of X, then we say that F is the antiderivative of F of X, all right? And to find such a function, we define what is known as antiderivative, all right? So definition one, a function F is called antiderivative of F, small f on an interval i if f prime of x is equal to f of x for all x in that interval i okay so if we can find a function f whose derivative is given by f of x then we say that f is the antiderivative of f of x all right so example if we have f of x giving us 3s squared, if we keep the power rule in mind, we can deduce the formula whose derivative is given by 3s squared, which is, if I assume that f of x is equal to s cubed, then if I differentiate f of x, this will give me 3s squared, and this is the same as f of x. And so since f prime of x is equal to f of x, we say that f of x, which is equal to s cubed, is an antiderivative of f of x, which is equal to 3x squared. Uh, so yeah, f of x equal to x cubed is an antiderivative of f of x. Now, since the derivative of a constant is equal to zero, so given any constant at all c, the derivative with respect to x of c is equal to zero, and keeping the sum and difference rule in mind, if we assume that f of x, or if we add the constant c to f of x, that gives us x cubed plus c. If we differentiate f of x, this will give us 3x squared plus zero which is equal to 3x squared, which is the same as f of x. So given any, um, now that we know, given any um, constant at all, if you differentiate it, that gives us zero. It means that the general form of the antiderivative of f of x, which is equal to 3x squared, is given by a capital F of x, which is x cubed plus c. All right, and so um, possible cases, possible cases for f of x are, we can assume any value for c, f of x is equal to s cubed plus 3. That's the possible case for the antiderivative of f of x, small f of x, which is equal to 3 s squared. f of x could also be equal to um, s cubed minus square root of 7. Any uh, function of the form s cubed plus c, where c is some arbitrary constant, is the antiderivative of 3x squared. All right, so that brings us to an important theorem, which says that if capital F is an antiderivative of F, 
all right that means if f prime of x is equal to f of x on some interval i then the, the most general antiderivative of f on i is given by f of x plus c where c is some arbitrary constant so let's look at some examples um a we want to find the antiderivative of the following functions f of x is equal to x to the power 4 b f of x is equal to 1 over x c f of x small f of x is equal to sine x and d f of x is equal to e to the power x all right so now we want to find a function f of x such that f prime of x is equal to f of x now let's add the plus c here because if we differentiate the c two we get zero okay so this is the function that we will know we want to find a function that if we differentiate you get x to the power four if we assume that f of x is equal to one over five x to the power five all right um plus c then f prime of x is equal to the derivative of 1 over 5, x to the power 5, the differentiation, you multiply the exponent by the function. So we have 5 times 1 over 5, x to the power, subtract 1 from the power, 4, plus the derivative of the constant, which is 0. So this is equal to x to the power 4 plus 0, which is equal to x to the power 4. And so since f prime of x is equal to f of x, it implies that the antiderivative of the function f of x, which is equal to x to the power 4, is given by 1 over 5x to the power 5 plus c, which is f of x plus c here. All right, then the second one, which is given by f of x is equal to 1 over x. Now, when we're doing the differentiation, we realize that when we differentiate... Um, ln x okay we get one over x so we're going to assume that capital f of x is equal to the ln of the absolute value of x so if x is greater than zero that is if x is a positive number then f of x is equal to the ln of x okay so let's try and differentiate this function if we find f prime of x this is equal to one over x now for x less than zero that means that capital f of x this is equal to um, ln of negative x so if we differentiate capital f of x this will give us negative of negative 1 over x which is equal to 1 over x when we differentiated when the um, independent variable x was positive we are getting f of x here too we are getting f of x so this implies that the antiderivative of f of x which is equal to 1 over x is given by capital f of x which is equal to ln of the absolute value of x plus c then the third one we have um, f of x is equal to sine x okay so uh we know that if we differentiate cos cos x we get negative sine x all right so um, we assume that f of x is equal to cos of x and so f prime of x this gives us negative sine of x but the function that we've been given is positive sine x that means that the function that we need to differentiate to get positive sine x must be negative cos of x so f of x assuming is equal to negative cos of x then f prime of x is equal to the negative of negative sine x which is equal to sine x and this is the same as f of x so since f prime of x is equal to f of x it implies that negative cos x 
class C is the antiderivative of f of x, which is equal to um, sine x. Um, then we had the last one, which is f of x is equal to e to the power x. All right, we know that if you differentiate the exponential function e to the power x, we get e to the power x. So we assume that capital F of x is equal to e to the power x. Then f prime of x, this is equal to, if you differentiate this, we'll get e to the power x, which is the same as f of x. So since f prime of x is equal to f of x, it implies that um, the antiderivative of f of x is e to the power x plus c. All right, now try this out. Find the antiderivative of f of x, which is given by cos of x.